This lesson is all about looper pedals. We're going to talk about what a looper pedal actually is, why it can be so beneficial for your development as a guitar player, and get into how to actually start using a looper pedal. So this is the final lesson of series three of my beginner guitar course. You can find the link to the full playlist in the description below. Be sure to check out all the lessons because this series is there to prepare you for the riffs and songs coming in the next series, which is going to offer plenty of opportunities to practice with a looper. So let's get into it. So what actually is a looper pedal? Well, it's essentially just a recording device that records a segment of your guitar playing and repeats it continuously or loops it so you can create your own rhythm parts that you can then practice along to. So I'm gonna give you a quick demonstration of some looping. I've even got a little pedal cam so you can see exactly what's going on. So I'm gonna start by recording my chords. Now those chords are going to repeat continuously so I can stick some extra effects on and improvise over the top. So that was an example of using a looper to do a bit of improvising, but also any song that you're learning that has both a rhythm and a lead part, you can use a looper to put those two parts together in the style of the original song and try and recreate the sound of the original track. So why is this so good for your development as a player? Well, I'm going to break it into three categories. The first of all being knowledge, because when you're using a looper, you have to learn both the rhythm and the lead parts of songs. So naturally it just expands your repertoire, but also you learn in more depth about how these parts work together. So you learn how they work together harmonically. You'll pick up ideas about what kind of scales work over what chords rhythmically because you have to learn how the timing of the two parts intertwine together but also sonically because you're probably going to want to use different guitar sounds for the rhythm parts than the lead parts so you can start experimenting with different effects and pickup selections as well. Secondly, it will massively improve the quality of your playing. First of all, rhythmically, because to create a loop that is actually useful, the timing has to be absolutely perfect. You're completely accountable for the timing, so you can't speed up or slow down or stop and then start again. It has to be perfect. And while you're working towards creating them perfect loops, it'll help you eradicate any bad habits that you might have picked up. Likewise, when it comes to chord quality, when you're practicing the guitar, sometimes you might miss certain little imperfections in your chords because you're very busy concentrating on what you're actually playing. But when you hear them back through a looper, sometimes it can point out some areas that you might want to work on going forward. And also the lead part has to be perfectly in time. So it's constantly forcing you to improve, making you listen really attentively to the original track and then improving your ability to actually play it. And finally, the best reason is just that it's a lot of fun. So when you're using a looper, your practice will gain more purpose because you can have that goal of recreating the sound of the original song and you will genuinely feel good about it when you finally nail it. Also, for the reasons I've already mentioned, you'll begin to improve as a guitar player and everyone enjoys experiencing a little bit of progress in the stuff that they're working on. Finally, looking further down the line, if you get really good at looping, it does open up more opportunities in the future. As I've already shown, you can use it to practice a bit of improvising, but it also works as a great songwriting tool as well. So now that I'm done being a looper salesman, let's have a chat about how to actually use one. And we'll go from the very top, which starts with actually plugging one in, because this might be the first pedal that you've ever used. So if you've currently got a guitar plugged into an amp with a single cable, you're going to want to get hold of another guitar cable and add your looper pedal to this. Now you'll need a power supply for your looper. Sometimes they come with them, sometimes they don't. They're usually 9 volts, but do check. And you can just get them cheaply off Amazon if it doesn't come with one. So now you're going to want to plug your guitar into the looper and then the looper into the amp. And it's important to be aware that pedals work from right to left because most people are right handed. So it just keeps the trailing cable out the way. Unfortunately, lefties aren't really catered for in that sense. But just check that you're definitely plugging the guitar into the input, not the output. And if you're using any other pedals alongside, then you'll want to put your looper last in the chain because then you can have different sounds on your rhythm and lead parts. If you put the looper earlier in the chain, then put an effect on such as an overdrive, it'll actually distort the sound of your loop, which isn't what you want. 
So now I'm going to recreate that demo loop from earlier to show you how it's done. If you want to try this one yourself, it's G C add nine D C add nine. And essentially what you have to do is press the button on the looper as you strum the first chord to start the recording. Then you're going to play through your whole progression. Then you have to click the button again to stop the recording, at which point the loop will start to repeat. Now it's really important that both clicks land exactly on beat one of the first bar of the progression. So for me, that's going to be the first downstrum of each G chord. So essentially it's the point where the progression goes full circle. So let's take a look. So listen back to your loop and if you do a good one you'll notice that when it repeats from the start again you get a nice smooth transition. So let's see if I've done a good one. Not too bad. So that's what you're aiming for. You want it to be in time when the repeat starts again. Now because I've been doing this for years, I've probably made it seem a little bit easier than it's going to feel for you when you first start trying to get loops down. So I've just got a couple of things to kind of warn you about, which first of all is that the looper has no idea what you're trying to play or what you're trying to record, which is why it's really important that the button click is perfectly in time. So for example, if you click the button and then there's a slight delay and then you start playing, the looper will actually record that little pause and then every time your progression gets back to the start, there'll be a little delay and then it'll start again and it'll just feel weird and you'll, you won't have that smooth transition. Likewise, if you're recording the progression and you're trying to stop the loop on time but you panic and press it too early, which is a really common thing, uh, then when you're listening back to your loop, it'll actually cut off the end and the start of the next repeat will jump in too early. So there's just a couple of things to watch out for. If you are struggling, I've got a couple of ideas of things that you can try. The first one is to actually record your loop along to a metronome click. So obviously that's going to stop you speeding up or slowing down and it means you can synchronize the pressing of the button with the click of the metronome. Another thing that some of my students sometimes use is doing a little bit of extra strumming on the first chord before you actually start the loop, just to kind of get into the groove and the rhythm of the part that you're about to play. Personally, I've always preferred just to dive straight into the loop, but it just depends what's more comfortable for you. Ultimately, it is another skill to develop and it's going to take a little bit of time to get used to, so don't worry if your loops are a little bit dodgy at first. Just keep working on refining them over time and before long you'll get the knack of it and you'll be recording nice smooth loops without even thinking about it. And the final part of this video is going to be some recommendations on what looper to buy. So my number one would be the TC Electronic Ditto because it's really small and easy to use. It's only got one button on it, so you've just got to learn a few commands for starting and stopping recordings and deleting tracks and things like that. Uh, I've also used boss loopers for a long time, so I learned to do looping on this boss loop station, which is pretty old now and it's served me pretty well. So I definitely recommend the boss stuff. Uh, they've also got some updated models out since then as well. Now just to explain what I'm using in this video, it's actually a Landlord Looper, which I only bought to test whether it would work as a cheap option to recommend to students. But what ended up happening in the end is that mine's always worked totally fine. But since then I've had multiple students buy one and have problems with it. So I've actually stopped recommending those because I don't think it's worth the risk. I think you'd be better off paying a bit extra and getting hold of a ditto. And one final point, you can also get a Ditto Plus, which enables you to save your loops and recall them later. Now that sounds great, but I would actually advise against it at first. First of all, because it'll save you a bit of money, but secondly, because I think that it's a good thing to have to constantly be recreating your loops, because then you'll be forced into making all of those refinements that I was talking about earlier on in the lesson. It means you can't just happen to fluke a good loop one day and then cling on to it forever. So I think by having to re-record those loops, it's actually better for your development in the long run. So I hope that's given you an insight into how loopers work and why they can be so beneficial to your guitar playing. I would definitely recommend any guitar player to give looping a go. So as I mentioned, this is the end of series three. So make sure you're totally happy with all the theory and techniques that we've been over because we're going to be using them all in series four and you'll get the chance to put your looping into practice as well. Remember, you can download extra materials for the entire course on my Patreon page via the link in the description. All the lessons are nice and organized on my YouTube channel. So feel free to subscribe if you want to follow along and I'll see you in the next series.